All righty, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Nerdcore Podcast. This is your one and only source for all things nerdy, whether it be video games, comic books, TV shows, whatever you need. We got your back. I am your host, as always. My name is Matt Hedrick, and here with me is my good buddy, Chad Porto. How you doing, sir? I am good. How are you? About as good as I can be. So um, when we go through what we got on the uh, docket for tonight, we got some weird uh, weirdness in the world of Animal Crossing as far as uh, horror is concerned, which I would never think I would say. Uh, God of War is getting some new comic uh, a new comic book, and we're also seeing some changes happen to Captain America that, you know, while they might be controversial, I have a different opinion on that. So let's just uh, go ahead and get into this stuff then. Huh? So first and foremost, let's talk about the Animal Crossing, because cause that's, that's, that's where the weirdness is this week. Um, mm-hmm. it's, 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 so they're making an Animal Crossing movie, which makes sense. But to be fair, I don't mm. think this is exactly the horror thing that people are going to be shocked by. Now, I haven't seen the... the, the it, I guess there's an Animal Crossing short called Don't Peek. Yeah. That's not what this yeah, it's movie like a YouTube is, YouTube short or something? It, you, you, there, there's, what, it's supposed to be an actual movie? Okay, um, so, like so this short is being turned into a movie. Mm. Okay. So... It's about a monster who gets trapped inside Animal Crossings. But here's the thing: I don't think that's the I don't I don't think that's the horror that that they need to go to. You got to remember that Animal Crossing is a world of anthropomorphic animals and humans living together in harmony. That's horrifying. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine like a raccoon neighbor sitting outside your 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 door, just like eating trash and staring at you through the window? That's the horror, right? Tom Nook owes your entire life, and you have to continually pay him off. The the whole game is a horror story. I always thought that was a morbid thing, right? Like, damn, man. He does it all in a Hawaiian shirt too; makes even more creepy, right? Like he's like a Hawaiian Santa Claus who just shows up and he's like, and he goes trick or treat, give me my Thanksgiving treats, and you're like, wait, what? This is a confusing mesh of holidays. (laughs) You gotta love how you pay a shit ton of money to make a bridge, and every time you do that, dude's like his building gets like five times the size it never really was. Right, and then he comes by and goes, "Hey, that's a nice bridge. Shame if something happens to it." And you're like, "Wait, what? <laughs> are, are you in the mafia? What is going on here, Tom Nook?" <laughs> I got something I need you to do, but you need to go to four different islands and get three different types of tools to get it. Four and I'm not gonna pay you for anything. And you have to build bridges. That's gonna cost you money. That I'll loan you. That you have to pay back eventually. This is a crook. Right? Okay. It's like that episode of, uh, I think it's the Rugrats, where, like, um, uh, da-da, what's her name? The older cousin's sister? Well, not sister. Older cousin's The one who owns Cynthia. Angelica. Uh, Ange- Angelica, yeah. Yeah, Angelica's fucking with the babies, because, like, the babies, like, got each other gifts, but, like, Angelica has, like, the other half of the gifts that would make it like, a great addition. So, like, to get the gifts, she has them trade the other gifts. So, like... For the sake of argument, just simple things. Let's say Phil and Lil have a ball and a etch a sketch. No, a ball and and a crayon book. Okay. Well, Angelica has a bat and crayons, so she makes them trade the ball for the crayons and the bat for the coloring book, so that the babies can give them their gifts because they know that would complete the set. So like that, Phil would have a, a ball and a bat, and and Lil would have the the crayons and a book. But in order to get the present for the other one, they had to give up the thing that they already had. And it's duplicious, and it's horrid, and it's evil. I'm like, God, that's, that's the United States economy right there in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love how that, that sends a message without really intending on sending it? Right? Like, it's hey, so listen, uh, you know, we need you to buy homes, so we'll give you a loan, but we're not going to help you pay back the loan uh, uh, at all. That's on you. But then we're going to charge you interest. So even though you got approved at uh, you know a thousand bucks a month, we're going to charge you thirteen hundred bucks a month because we're fucking evil. And if you don't pay it back in, in certain increments, we're, we're going to just pull the loan and take your house anyway. And hey, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> fuck man. Yeah, it's, it's awful. <laughs> you don't you don't need to do fucking Five Nights at Freddy's meets Animal Crossing. Life alone in this fucking thing is horror is terrifying. That's why I'm going tiny house, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> 
I'm gonna install my own fucking uh, uh, solar. I'm, I'm gonna collect my own goddamn water and, and maybe buy some, you know, as needed. And like, fuck off. I'm gonna buy a plot of land and be like, this is my country now. <laughs> this is the United States of Chad America. <laughs> oh, God is that damn why it. they made animals? Is that why they made Animal Crossing no. to get everybody ready for what the world no. will eventually become? It, sh- it, sh- it should have been the United States of, of, of America, Chad. Damn it. Better name. I already named it Chad America. So like, I don't know, man. I guess we're going to have a civil war now. Chad America versus America, Chad. We're going to see how it ends. The oh, United geez. States colonies of Chad America, Chad. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a single, ever. It's a single three-acre plot of land. With a with a flag of me doing the deuces, no, or me doing the shocker symbol. <laughs> Is like this an like anime a Family character? Guy when he had like Pretoria or some shit. Something like that. Yeah, I do remember that. Uh, are you gonna watch a Animal Cro- uh, Animal Crossing horror film? I'm I'm in I'm intrigued by the concept, but like I'm wondering what it's gonna actually be. You know, like mm-hmm. what what can you actually do with it and. The biggest thing I'm concerned with is that I don't think it's going to be directly Animal Crossing because unless you get Nintendo's blessing, you can't use the IP. I, no, well, it says knowledge. it says right here uh, they are um, the short film is unaffiliated with Nintendo, but if they're going to do mm. a feature full length version of this, and then, then they probably already have Nintendo's blessing, I'd imagine. Hmm. Nintendo does some weird shit. Like I, I would you would think that like with something like that they would try to keep it in the cute realm, but no, go for horror. Like what? So it says right here oh. that the guy who's doing it, I think is a guy, Terry. Uh, I, I didn't see a first name, so uh, he explained or they explained that the feature full length movie wouldn't directly reference Animal Crossing, but would instead cover gaming more broadly. So you might be right. We know he can't legally get away with it, so th- th- there it is. The story is actually something also and entirely in taps into the nostalgia of video games. I can't wait for you all to see it. So, like, I don't know. It may not be the story that we think it is, so I think we should just move on because that just killed my interest in the game. <laughs> or uh, the, uh, the movie, I should say. <laughs> so, like, good job, fucking article. It's not all. It's not an Animal Crossing horror game if that doesn't have an all Animal Crossing. It's just a horror. It's just a horror movie. Like, fuck off. All right, so apparently a uh, new God of War comic series will, fi- will fill in the gaps leading up to Kratos' PS4 adventure. Matt, you you've you enjoyed uh, God of War four, yes? Yeah, I did. I had a good I had a good time with it to a degree. I felt it was an interesting um, interesting take and a new idea on how to play the game. I just feel like some parts of it kind of felt underwhelming a little bit, you know. So the game's like five years old. So fuck off. If if you don't want to know how it ends, you you, you should have played it by now. So mm-hmm. Kratos brings his boy. Boy, back to uh, his home. And then all of a sudden, Thor drops down like a motherfucker going, Kratos, we gonna fuck fight. Kratos like, yeah, buddy. And then it ends. I would rather know how that story continues than, than how he goes from Greece to Norway or wherever. I don't give a fuck. Give me Thor mm-hmm. and Kratos. Like, that's what I want. Throw down. Well, I'm pretty sure this will have a lot of action in it, too. There's, I'm pre- I mean, there's gonna be... St- storytelling and everything but even with even with stuff that i read man like there's a lot more action in it or just as much action as storytelling so i'm i'm hopeful that this will do that too like have a good balance because i read horizon zero dawn and that was a good one well let, let, let me we can go down that let me be very clear i don't mean story mm. i mean literally i just mm. want to see thor <laughs> in god of war like give that to me I don't care how I, I don't care if it's a, a sixty-eight page monologue of Thor complaining about why he wants to kill Kratos. That's fine. I just want to see Thor and it'd be awesome. That's it. Uh. Yeah, it could be fun. That could be fun to see. Like, right? So it could be in anything. It doesn't even have to be like comic books. You just want him in the game in some game form in, movie, in this franchise. Adult movie. I don't give a shit. Thor Kratos, whoa, throw down. Whoa. That's it. That's all I want. I want to see Mjolnir or whatever the fuck Thor's mystical hammer in the, in the uh, mythology is called going toe-to-toe with Kratos and his goddamn double blades of death. What's that? Oh, now, by the by. throw down, would Thor, would you think Thor would take him out? Or you well, think if you're Kratos playing in, the, in the game, obviously Kratos would win. But I don't know. In reality, who knows? By the by, uh, they're bringing back, or at least they're uh, planning... I don't know if they've uh, you know finalized it, but there are talks of 
King of the Hill being revived, set 15 years after the events of the first uh, series. I am intrigued. It's right. Best line in the history of modern-day cinema. Bobber, do you know how to start a man's heart with a down power line? Uh, no. Well, that's all right. There's no wrong way to do it. <laughs> do you know how to start a oh, heart man. with a down power line? There's no wrong way. Oh, that's great. I love it. All right. <laughs> so next up we have... Oh, I hit the wrong button. Hey, yeah, that's brought back. Uh, we got a new Cap Murica. Instead of the red, white, and blue, he's waving the the, uh, the pride flag. Red, white, blue, green, yellow, and, and all them other colors. He's he's gay. And I don't care. Whenever it comes to a character becoming like, oh, they're, they're going to have a black Batman, I'm like, ah, whatever. I don't care. Because to me, like, it's a mantle. There can be a gay Captain America, but there can be a Hispanic woman Captain America. They can, there can be a white dude Captain America. My concern usually is whenever we start getting characters who are like established for 58 years, 70 years being changed, because I feel like that's basically telling the, the established audience your character that you've liked for 60 years or for how many ever years you've been alive is not good enough and we need to change it because you're not good enough. And that irritates me because you're basically telling a longtime consumer, we don't care about you. Because we're going to fuck with this character you like. Now, if you give me a new character who's different and, and, and fits a, a different kind of you know, mentality or, or, or what have you, I, I don't have a problem with that. You know, um, I think that's kind of where a lot of comic book writers and creative teams fail is that they try to oftentimes change the established norm or the status quo of certain established characters to try to fill in um, kind of like gaps in, in the audience. Like, we need more of this group or we need more of this group, so let's change this character. That's where things go kind of sideways. This isn't Steve Rogers. This is a brand new character, and I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, I, I, introducing a, 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 a gay character as Captain America is fine. I would have more of an issue with, a, with, with a, a gay Steve Rogers because that was not who the character was established to be. But this isn't just me going with like, oh, don't change the straight white dude. If there are characters who are created to be gay and someone wants to envision them as straight, I'd have a problem with that. If there are black characters that were established as that identity and they want to change that, I would have a problem with that. It's not about seeing representation of only my ilk. It's about me as a writer wanting to know that the creations that were established long ago are being upheld and respected by the people who aren't there anymore to fight for their their voice anymore. So as a writer... I, I, I have a problem with changing well-established characters to fit a, a different narrative. But that doesn't mean that I have an issue with new characters like... Uh, I forget what this character's name is. I completely closed out of the, uh, the article. Uh, do you remember what it is? Let me, um, let me go look, because I don't have... I, I got it. I got it. Up here. I'm pulling it up. Don't okay. worry about it. Aaron Fisher. Fisher! <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Fisher, you finally got yourself a character. So, like, yeah, it's a brand new character. You know, he's got a, a little dumb A tattoo on his shoulder. Uh, why? why? I, I really just hate the design. He's wearing, like, a hokey mask and overalls. I, I don't know what the hell this is supposed to be. <laughs> he will be the first of five versions of Captain America introduced in the series, each of them coming from different walks of life, and each of them taking up the mantle in order to defend their communities. Uh, do we have any of the other four? I guess not. <clears throat> I guess we have to wait. So, okay, this isn't... All right, so, so a little bit more. This isn't even just a new Captain America uh, in, in general. It's a new series. The United States of Captain America. So that's interesting. Hmm. I'd like to see them come together. Come together right now. Oh, so this is like all of the different ones then? Yeah, there's going to be apparently five then? total characters in this uh, hmm. series all representing a different version of Captain America. Now, in some aspects, that could mean that like, it's a multiverse thing, but no, what this is going to be, it's like, uh, it's just going to be five different dudes in, in this Marvel universe who are like, or do that's popping up with, with the Captain America thing. I think that'd be uh, uh, relatively interesting. <clears throat> so I think that's hmm. pretty cool. Although I yeah, think they, I think they cool. would have to change their name because they can't be Captain America. They would have to be Cadet America, I would imagine. Maybe Private America. Oh, that, that sounds like an adult fantasy I didn't think, uh, about, I didn't think about that, like, right. 
Welcome to private America. Like, see, that doesn't work. It's like corporal America. <laughs> yeah. The, the, oh, man. The, 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 use it in for dirty, ter- dirty terms. I don't know. That's weird. Right. Any thoughts on this? Any interest in this? I, I'm all for if you want to have a version of a character that just happens to be, you know, gay. Different. That's fine. Like I, I have no no issues with that whatsoever. I just hope that you get something good out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, like you get you get a good story. You get something interesting with this character. Everything ties well together, and this doesn't become just something to push something else. I, I want to be as sensitive as I can here. You know, well, I just don't want sometimes it to push an agenda for something. Well, it's I don't think the agenda is the issue. I think part of the time that these come out is that a lot of these writers try to put stuff in the sauce that doesn't need to be there in terms of, like, heavy-handed things that derive from the point. And it's one thing to do it in a way that embraces, you know, this character's, you know, identity and sexuality and all that. It's another thing to try to layer in other topics as well. And I think that's one of the reasons why modern-day comics are losing their audiences. They, They put in moral messages far too often for what's supposed to be a, a punch punch kick book. So I, I think that's part of the issue is everyone's trying to be, you know, irreverent and, and, and have this thought provoking narrative of, of deconstructionalism and, and inner per, uh, perspectiveness and, and uh, uh, the, what's the, what's the trendy thing to do? Um, subverting expectations. Just tell a story about a gay dude. It's like, I, I want, I want to make sure my, my Oklahoma town is is no longer dealing with with drug dealers. Like, all right, I'm in. Let's go. I don't need to know about your issues with Israel, <laughs> which yes, yeah, you don't... was literally put into a Thor book. <laughs> yeah, like I, I I do understand that too. Like it's the whole like you don't need it to be some grand over the top thing. Why not make it a tight focus narrative? Mm-hmm. You know, just on that person and what they're going through and everything like that. Would that would make it far more interesting to me. And I think if you can, they can do that, if Marvel can do that, they can be successful with this. But I've read a few Marvel comics here and there in the past, man, and I dropped them relatively quickly, quickly because their writing is just, whew, just not good at all. And I hope they, I hope they can do something with this. But I, I have my doubts just in terms of writing, not in terms of what characters they're representing or anything. So with that being said, let's uh, let's move on and uh, tackle. Let's see. Oh yeah, so I watched a bunch of zombie movies again. <laughs> on the Zombie Zombie kick, huh? Yes, yeah, I finished my Zombie kick. Now, which ones did I tell you about? Do you remember? Um, last week I the one I remember I remember Warm Bodies. Okay. There was one with uh, John C. Riley and Molly Shannon. I don't remember the name. Not Molly Shannon, but yeah. Uh, no, yeah, Molly Shannon. You're right. Never mind. Yeah, Life After Beth. Mm. And then I told you I was going to watch Burying the X, but I didn't watch it. Or, or I already watched it, but I was going to rewatch it. Right. Okay. So then I rewatched Burying the X, and it's still just as good as, as I remember. Um, uh, uh, Alexander Daddario is fantastic in that, and Anton Yelchin's amazing. Uh, I, I forget the first time. I think it's like Rachel Green. She's even great in that because she's very likable in a lot of the movie. But you can tell mm-hmm. that like, as a couple, they're just not working. Like uh, Anton Yelchin's character is having to give up a lot to be with her. Um, mm-hmm. And eventually gets becomes too much and he wants to break up with her. And she ends up getting hit by a bus and that's how she dies. So then he ends up meeting or uh, meeting again Alexander Daddario after her death. And um, basically, she uh, <clears throat> she's like, you know, hey, I got nothing going on. Do you want to hang out? You know, oh, do you have a girlfriend? You know, that's right. I forgot. And he's like, well, she's no longer um, with us. <laughs> he doesn't say she's dead, so it's great. So they go out and they have fun, and then his girlfriend comes back, and it causes some emotional and relationship turmoil with within the group. It's very funny, very very fun, and the ending is hilarious. It's just, it's peak awesome. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, I watched Fido, which had a uh, uh, who was it? Um, uh, Billy Connolly. I don't know if you remember who okay. Billy Connolly is. I am not familiar now. He was the father in Boondock Saints, and he's been a, he's been in a bunch of shit. <clears throat> so he plays the titular uh, zombie Fido. Basically, it's 1950s America, and everyone kind of has like a zombie 
who like does chores and shit because like this collar nullifies the rage. It's very dumb, but very awesome. And it's basically just Lassie, but replace Lassie with a man eating zombie. <laughs> That's literally the movie. And it's oh, very it sounds fun. Sounds so weird. Oh, it's very it, no, it's very fun. It's not a horror film by any means, except for the fact that there is zombies and a little bit of gore. Uh, but it's it's hilarious as shit. Like the little kid kills a zombie, but he does it with like a uh, uh, a shovel, and and like the only thing you see is like the silhouette of the stars behind him as he's doing it. It's it's very well shot. I I, I highly enjoyed it. Like um, old yeller type shit. It, it sounds like it really is old yeller. It, it, it's literally old yeller meets Lassie, only with Zack Snyder's uh, um, Dawn uh, of the Dead. It's all played for laughs. Billy Connolly it has like a romantic relationship with uh, the chick from the from the Matrix movie. I forget what her name is. She played. Oh, uh, you're thinking of Trinity. <coughs> I can't. Yeah. can't think of her name. She's in this as the mom, and like she starts to have like feelings for the zombie. Nothing happens. But it's heavily implied that the neighbor's doinking his zombies. Like, it's it's a weird fucking movie, but it's it's very enjoyable. I saw Cooties, which stars um, uh, Frodo. What's his name? Frodo. Oh, you're thinking of um, Elijah Wood. Why? Uh, yes. So Elijah Wood is a substitute teacher at a summer school. Just moved back to his hometown, and uh, he he knows that his former love interest from like the sixth grade, Allison Pill, is working there. So he goes there to try to reconnect. While he's there, tainted chicken uh, uh, gets put into a chicken nugget, and a little girl eats it, and all the kids end up getting infected. Oh, now, damn. here's a minor spoiler. It's not a big one, but the reason why it's just the kids is that the tainted meat and the viral infection does not affect anyone who hits puberty. So once you hit puberty, you can't be infected, but you can still obviously get torn apart to shreds. So it's hilarious, mm. and if you hate kids, if you find them annoying, this movie is going to just enforce everything you've ever believed about kids. <laughs> uh, Rain okay, Wilson. see cooties now. <laughs> yeah, Rain Wilson is in it, and um, uh, oh, I think Meredith from The Office is in it as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, Big Mike from Chuck is in it, but he only has like one scene. And I, I, I raged so hard when I realized that he only had one scene. I was like, how can you give me Big Mike of the Buy More and only have him around for one scene? Like, like you whores. So it's very Isn't fun. this where like the zombie outbreak takes, break, takes place at like the school or something like that? I yes, think it, yes and no. Else. Yes, yes, but no. Uh, it does happen inside of a school, but throughout the movie, you find out that it's not just happening inside the school. It's happening all over the place. Okay. But, yeah, the, okay. the, the setup for 90% of the movie is that it happens inside the school. At least mm-hmm. that's all they, they're they trapped inside the school. So it is very funny. Um, <laughs> so the next one I saw, it wasn't a comedy, but it was another kind of, like, variant take on the zombie apocalypse idea. But this one, I think, fell flat, and it had the best of ideas. It's called Pontypool. P-O-N-T-Y-P-O-O-L. It's a, a, a city in Canada. And the general gist was that they just got a new radio host who was from a, a larger market but was fired for one reason or another, more than likely alcoholism. And he's on the air talking about, like, stupid things like missing cats and, you know, a, um, uh, a community theater group's coming in. So, like, it's, it's like a very local, very farm-like town. They're an AM station. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they're broadcasting from the bottom of a basement uh, in, in a uh, church because that's all they can afford but throughout the movie, they start getting calls of violence and disturbing imagery, and you're only ever in the basement with these folks. Like, There's like one shot of the guy driving up that sets up the movie, but you know, it, it, it's, it's you know, a one-time scene, and then there's a scene where they go outside of the front of the church for a brief moment, but I don't remember any of the film literally taking place outside of, of the church besides those two minor four-second scenes. So hmm. it, it, it does set up a great idea. Here's where the problem lies. The virus of the, of the titular Pontypool is, is a spoken virus, almost like a subliminal message. But hmm. they don't address it as a subliminal message. They're like, it's just a virus that infects words, and then it gets into your head. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. There's no way they that's can pay this writing, off. Man. Oh, what it is. Fuck? And I'm like, there's no way they can pay this off. 
So throughout the movie, they're speaking English, and then when they realize that the English language is the carrier, they're like, oh, we have to speak in, in French. But no one knows French in Canada, apparently. So they're like, ah, Varley vous France and Genesis Quan. Vous Katsua. So, like, you know, they're, they're fucked. And then one of the main characters, I, I don't want you to watch the movie, so I'm going to ruin it. There's two yeah. main characters, the guy and the girl. Uh, the girl's like the exec- executive producer and then the, the host. The executive producer gets infected and she starts like, mum- like mumbling and, and jibber jabber. And then the guy's like, oh, no, you know, the, the infection's taking a hold of you. And, and the only way we can fight the virus is by making it not make sense. So up is down, yellow is, is, is hairdresser and poster is floor. And she's like, oh, you cured me. And I'm like, kill me. This is the dumbest fucking ending ever. <laughs> Sounds it, really fucking It gets stupid. even worse because then he's like, I'm going to try to save the town. So he hops back on the radio and he's like, nothing makes sense. Purple is, is, is canister and, and tree is frog. And I'm like, uh. and then at the end of the movie, it's, it's basically revealed like the, the whole world went to shit. Like, all the English language speaking countries went to shit. And the two main characters are on Thailand just speaking nonsense because they rewrote the English language for themselves. I'm like, this is fucking oh, dumb. God. <laughs> like, it was like the greatest wow. premise, the greatest premise. And then they just they went fucking fit, try, man, what right into a goddamn tree. It was dumb. Okay, so before all this, I told you I watched a movie called Train to Busan. Okay, remember that movie I told you about? Zombie flick on yeah, the on a train. About, I've, heard, I've heard about this movie a few times from a few different like reviewers right. and stuff too. Yeah. So basically, the ending was the hardest goddamn thing I've ever had to sit through because like I was just wrecked by it. It was a great movie. Mm. Beautifully done. I, I I have the urge to rewatch it, and I don't rewatch movies, so that, that gives you an idea how good it was. But mm. the ending literally had me in tears because I was like, "Oh no, you can't do it like this! Don't do it like this!" The next movie, Anne and the Apocalypse. Then they just... No, I'm not going to say anything. You need to watch the movie to figure out if they do, in fact, or don't do it. In fact, do it like this. <laughs> you will see, <laughs> and then you will be like, "Yeah, no, I get it. No, I was right there. I was like, uh oh, <laughs> we're in trouble." I forget the rest of that song. Uh oh, we're in trouble. Something's come along and it's burst our bubble. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Did they make a second movie in this thing? From I think I heard yes. about there being like a sequel to it. Too, yeah, right? it's called like it. I think it's pronounced penin. Uh, it's it's spelled out peninsula, but it's like pina su sula solala or something like that. I don't know how you're actually pre- supposed mm. to pronounce it. It's not a sequel, in the sense of it's a continuation. It's not. It's a sequel, only okay. that it expands the story within the universe. So it's another event within this region. But it's from a different set of characters. Hmm. So that, that's fine, because my hope for the end of the first one stays intact until, I don't, you know, until they decide to ruin that for me. Uh, and then there's an animated movie that I have not seen yet that I just heard about. So this movie's like entirely subtitles and stuff like that, right? It's like no, there's a, there like there is an English dub. If you go to Tubi, I think it's either Tubi or Crackle. I think it's Tubi, t o t u b i dot com. Free website. You just okay. got to put in a uh, uh, an email address and sit through a minute of commercials every twenty minutes. You can watch the dubbed version right there. <clears throat> and I think cool. one of the uh, the voice actors who dubbed it is the voice of All Might from My Hero Academia. But anyway, nice. I used that to set up this. So, so Train Busan was the hardest ending to watch because, like, oh, God, is this going to happen the way I think it is? Anna and the Apocalypse is, is, is maybe harder or maybe a different kind of hard because it doesn't end in any way, shape, or form the way the movie would expect you to think it would, considering what it is. Anna and the Apocalypse is a zombie flick set in England. But what it actually is a, is a zombie musical comedy. Set during Christmas. Okay, then. Wow. You would think that a a movie, you would think that a movie that is a musical, comedy, zombie apocalypse film set during Christmas would have a relatively chipper ending. And it doesn't. It does not. And I was not expecting that. Like, I was, it it doesn't take long for you to realize that this film is not going to, like, this film does not fucking care about you. This film hates you. This film wants you to know that you are the worst lover it's ever had and it's going to ruin your life because it's fun. And it doesn't take long to get there. And you're like, wait, I thought we were just having fun. Now you're talking about feelings and now you're dumping me? What the fuck, Anna and the Apocalypse? So this movie's going to wreck you. It's a jilted girlfriend or something. Worse than than that, it's a a narcissistic, psychopathic girlfriend who just wants to cause violence wherever she goes. 
Here's the thing, oh, though. The yeah. movie's enjoyable. It's really good. But okay. it... It's like you, you all right. So, so here's the best kind of one to one comparison I can make. You ever see someone make like um, like a chocolate cake, but then you cut into it and it's just styrofoam? I have never heard of this, honestly. Well, it, it's it was like a, a thing. Like somebody would like get, get get like a styrofoam thing and they would just like spread over it with like chocolate and whatnots, and and you'd be like, oh, it's a cake, and then you cut into it and it's like cardboard or some shit. Okay. So. It's it's that unexpected observation in a negative light in terms of like you, you are not getting gratification from this. This movie is that. It sets you up with the idea that this can be like a fun Shaun of the Dead, yay, kind of movie. And then like 35 minutes in, you're like, what? <laughs> that was supposed to happen in this movie. It I hate the term subverting expectations but this film does that entirely and it actually works because it does kind of shock your system and it doesn't do it at the end only it does it progressively throughout the movie to to set you up and i think it works in that regard it's not my favorite on this list i'll Mm. I'll probably give you a a, like a countdown here in a second but it is very enjoyable because it does kind of you know set up different expectations I always um, like the ideas of that stuff too. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I always like the fact that some a movie can lead you on and progressively keep you thinking and you know always guessing about what the next thing's going to be. So that might definitely be something I could be interested in. The, the funniest part is like, or, or the best part is like, Anna is like a gorgeous girl, and mm-hmm. there's a great scene where she comes out of her house because she doesn't realize what's going on around her. She's listening to music and singing uh, one of the, the original tracks from the uh, the movie. And she's like doing like this like kind of cute, kind of sexy strut down the street, singing her little song and like being awesome. And all behind her, it's just death and carnage and people dying. But because she can't hear and she's so oblivious to the world around her, she doesn't notice. It's great. And that's and that's the picture you have right here, dude. Yes, <laughs> that is literally the picture. <laughs> this picture's I have. fucking amazing, dude. This should be like a just your wallpaper. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's so good. And like the, when she realizes what's actually happening, it's because a dude is dressed up as a is a d- decrepit looking snowman trying to eat her and her best friend, and then she like hits a, a teeter totter and the head goes flying off, and the best friend's like, "It's a zombie apocalypse!" And Anna's like, "No, it's not. Zombies don't exist." And then he's like, "How do you explain that?" And the head in in the, uh, the snowman costume is just chattering away as the body is just laying twenty feet away from it. <laughs> like it really hits you with the yes, this is really happening, and it's great. Oh, man. So good. So the last one I saw, Little Monsters, Lupita Nyong'o. That's the only, oh, and Josh Gad. Only two names that I recognize in this film. It's so good. So basically, it's a story about a slacker who was in a music group. Uh, they, they, they were never big, but they broke up. And so like the guy is still trying to become a rock star, right? His girlfriend starts to hate him, cheats on him. Uh, the guy goes to live with his sister. And uh, he uh, starts bonding with his nephew, who's got, like, a slew of issues. Not, not, like, issues, issues, but, like, he's allergic to, like, a thousand different things. Mm-hmm. And, like, the uncle's like, that's dumb. You're, you know, that's stupid. Just eat a regular pizza. And the kid's like, I'll die if I do. And he's awesome. He's, the little kid is awesome. Uh, at one point, the dude dresses him up as Darth Vader to try to win over his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> and, and, what the fuck? And, and the Darth Vader thing comes back around for the climax. Like, that was great. But Lupita Nyong'o plays a kindergarten, I think it's kindergarten, teacher in Australia. <clears throat> and she's like, you know, I lived somewhere else for a long time, and I moved here. You know, I think it was because of a uh, – she was following uh, – I won't say anything about that. But she was following a band, came back, and uh, she started to become a kindergarten teacher to try to, you know, put her life back together. And she's this amazing, awesome, creative kindergarten teacher. And all the kids love her. And the main character, like, immediately wants to, wants to fuck her the minute he sees her. And apparently the sister's like, every dad does. Like, she's, she's just awesome. And they make her seem like this fucking sunshine, sunny D, summer day beauty throughout the entirety of the movie. And, like, throughout the entirety of the movie, like, you start to realize, this bitch badass. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, I don't want to give anything else away because, like, this movie is fantastic. And Josh Gad is great. There, I think it's even in the trailer, so I feel like I can give this away because it's in the trailer. There's a moment where like the kids are trying to get into this uh, um, gift shop, and Josh Gad's like, you know, no, go away, no, no one allowed in. She's like, oh, we have kids out here, and he goes, oh, good, fuck off. <laughs> so Josh Gad is just a, the biggest prick in the world. I love it. 
It's a really good film. I w- uh, so if I'm going to recommend these in order, I would say starting from Warm Bodies uh, from, from three weeks ago and, and going down, I would recommend Little Monsters first. Definitely. Uh, Bearing the X. Anna and the Apocalypse. Warm Bodies. Fido, Cuties, Life After Beth, and then Pontypool in that order. Hmm. So go back, re-listen to that list. That's the way I would recommend watching these. Otherwise, yeah. So so solid, solid times had by all. I haven't seen much movies with, like, Josh Gad in them. There's only one I ever remember seeing. I think it was, like, a Kevin Hart movie or something, and I thought he was pretty funny in that. I I forgot what it was, though. I think it was, like, he was some, like, wedding planner thing or something. I forgot. I think I know what you're talking about. Oh, he was uh, getting married because, like, he rented or, like, um, Kevin Hart was, like, a best friend on borrow or something like that or the best man on borrow, something like that. Is it, like, Wedding Ringer? Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. I think. That sounds about right. Okay. All right. All right. So go watch those movies if you have any interest. If not, don't care. Matt, what, what, what have you been watching on the YouTubes this week? Um, I actually did take uh, one of your recommendations, and I started to watch a little bit of the stuff on uh, Triple Jump. Okay. A couple of videos on there. I watched um, I watched Cad, uh, Caddy talk about uh, Bloodborne. I thought that was a pretty interesting video. I might check out that series in general. It was like, what does this game mean to me or something? And some of those sound really cool. And then I see one about Gears of War. I'm like, I don't care why it means to you, dude. <laughs> it's Gears of War. But Bloodborne was good. Even his... um. His sister's in one of them, actually. Really? Uh, Ro- Rose is in one of them, yeah. I miss her. She, she, she was really actually, good. She's actually part of a new uh, a YouTube channel now called PlayStation Access, I think. So she's doing new content? And uh, Yeah, she well, she's part of like a group that does like PlayStation. Mm-hmm. It was on the channel, but it's like part of a bigger conglomerate group. Um, her video was about um, what Tomb Raider meant to her. And I, 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 no offense to Caddy, but I found her story on Tomb Raider far more interesting. It was way more entertaining because she was, she was talking about like, she completed it when she was like four years old, and she was talking about like how it really resonated with her and how she could barely figure out how to jump, but once she figured it out, it was like the best game ever to her. <laughs> she absolutely loved it, and um, she was like. Her mom always wanted to spend time with her, but she was like, I really wanted, remember getting this game, I really wanted to play it so bad. So my idea of spending time with my mom was sitting downstairs playing two Raider while she was trying to talk to me. <laughs> just kind of a, like, a, oh, a dude, uh, you are funny, man. to hop in this. Um, so I just looked up PlayStation mm-hmm. Access on YouTube. They have 2.3 mm-hmm. or 2. 2.03 million subscribers. So 2 million and some odd change. Mm-hmm. The chick on the far right, the other redhead, because there's two redheads in PlayStation and Access. The one on the left is Caddy's sister. The one on the right is actually someone from the What Culture Horror channel that gave me a lot of these recommendations. In fact, she was doing most of the videos where I was getting the recommendations for the mm. zombie flicks. So I think that's kind of a uh, very interesting kind of like, hey, look, it's the same chick. <laughs> so I hey, thought that was pretty interesting. Like is this like a PlayStation um, um, backed channel? Uh, that I am that I am not sure of because I didn't really watch content on there. Um, the I just kind of found out that you know she was a part of that. Like I went to look her up or whatever. I'm like, is this really true? You know, like did she find a new channel to land on? Because I haven't seen her in ages. Right. You know? I haven't, I haven't seen any content like, in almost two years. Yeah, and so yeah, she's been a part of it for a while, and it. I'm not sure if it's backed by places, it is. but their stuff is all focused on. Is it really? It, hmm. th- their Twitter Good account links links exactly to the PlayStation UK official Twitter account. <clears throat> oh shit! Good for her then, man. That's a, that's a nice job to land on. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. I like that. So, but yeah, it, she she's entertaining, and I I might have I might check out that channel and maybe see you know at least some of the stuff maybe she does on there. See if it's any good. Um, let's see what else did we get. Um. I got uh, Slopes Game Room did a Pac-Man Complete History Part 1. Good God, I wish sometimes he'd make his videos shorter, hour-long hour long stuff about Pac-Man. Some of, it, some of it was really interesting, but I'm like, dude, you got to tighten the focus sometimes. Um, 
Like, there's some shit I already know, like the whole Puck Man thing. I don't know if you're familiar with how that came to be, like how they changed it for North America. Um, the original name in Japan was Puck Man, and in Japan they thought if they sent that over to America that people would <clears throat> tag it and make it something else. Yeah, probably. You know, obviously, like, yeah, so they... <laughs> So they decided to change it to Pac-Man or whatever. And I'm like, I, I've known about that. And there's a few other ones, too. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I feel like this you could have done more with this. But I'm always down for history of stuff, no matter what it is. The far more actual interesting one, um, these guys, I think, do a better job than he does. And it's called My Life in Gaming. They They tackle, like, retro things kind of at the core of what it is, you know? Mm-hmm. And the the biggest video they the most recent video they did they do an ongoing series called Analog Frontiers. Um, the third part came out recently, and it's talking about how game uh, game older game consoles and games themselves and how we're going through this weird kind of transition into what are we preserving, what are we trying to replicate, you know, what we're, are we trying to keep? And there was a there was a project I think where a guy need, wanted to take pictures of every console ever made or whatever to have them in a big history book or whatever and i thought that was cool um there's also ways to go about there's also this big talk between um like emulation you know are, are we like keeping these games um is it, is it legal to keep these games through emulation is that a bad thing you know and because if you don't keep them you're going to lose them forever you know mm. and a lot of people are saying like what's worth keeping what's not it's it's really intriguing stuff like and there's also like they make a good point like why would i want to go out and try to find a copy of little samson for like two thousand dollars like am i really going to play it and try to preserve that cartridge when i can just have the rom put it on one of these new flash cart things that they try to sell and have it forever preserved in the simplest way without breaking the bank i mean there's there's a gray area but i feel like if you can do it that way, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Um, but yeah, it's a good video. It's about half hour, 45 minutes long, but it covers a lot. So it's not like just their one note and dragging it out. But it's good. It's a good watch. Um, let's see. SNES Drunk, he did a couple of good ones this week. Uh, Toy Story, which I felt like was one of the most ambitious games for the Genesis and Super Nintendo, like especially for what it was trying to replicate at the time. But you can tell that game is rough as fuck. Um, Swords and Serpents, not a, not a game I'm really familiar with, but I don't know. He always finds a way to make these videos entertaining, so another good watch there. Um, Friday night, Friday night arcade. He did. A, he took a look at a game we actually have covered and reviewed on the show, which was uh, General Chaos, and he had a take. He had a take on it where it kind of was almost similar to us. He was like. There's games, there's ideas with this that are so ambitious and seem can be like fun, but when it's operating so sluggish and slow, like it takes all of the fun out of it. And I tend to agree. And it's it's a good watch. It's like I said, his videos are generally short, which is good. But yeah, I would definitely check that out. Um, the one, another one that didn't really hit the mark for me this week was um, I tend to like his stuff, but this one was kind of like it felt like a forced topic, almost like um, on Ma- on a Matt McMuscles level, you know. <laughs> like it really did. Like uh, Matt Matt just did a uh, Cyberpunk or something like that. But this one felt like that, like because it's talking about um, Ninja Theory, the guys who made um what is it, uh, Hellblade. Um, there's a couple other things that they made, but they most mostly been known for Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, that real big indie game from a couple of years ago. And they tried to make this online multiplayer thing called Bleeding Edge, and it just didn't get out of the gate. And I'm like, generally, he tends to break down things in a far more interesting way. But the way he came up with his notes, I'm like, dude, did you watch a Matt McMuscles video and just copy his format? Because you're getting lazy with this. Because generally, his stuff was like, it's like 20 minutes or so long. He covered it in like 10. I'm like, why would you even do this topic? It, It feels like there's nothing here. And it was a shame, and it was actually the, one of the first times his stuff has been a miss for me. Um, but as far as YouTube goes, that's really about it. So I haven't watched much YouTube this week. <clears throat> so let's let me scroll through. Uh, if you're a fan of college basketball or old school college basketball from like 15, 20 years ago, um, Secret mm. Base Secret Base did a great video on JJ Redick having beef with the University of Maryland. <laughs> 
So mm-hmm. like, that was a, a fun little look back in time when J.J. Redick ruled the world of college basketball. There's a great video from Team Four Star where it's, it's an original uh, video that they made, but it's a Dragon Ball Z original. And it's basically um, Cell being stuck in, in hell and having to deal with all the villains of, of Dragon Ball Z. Um, it, it's called Heffel, I think is, is what they call it. Um, it's basically, um, it's, it basically surmises to like Losers Forever or something like that. I forget what it was, like the whole thing, but like, that was the general gist of it. Uh, Pushing Up Roses did a look at the demon baby that ate a, a gerbil, which was actually a rat <laughs> episode of Goosebumps. What? Yeah, it's okay. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty awesome, and it's terrible. Like the CGI is awful, so that's definitely worth checking out if you're uh, a fan. Um, a lot of my w- weekly stuff I still have in my watch later in- inventory, so I don't really have too much more. I'm just scrolling down through to see if there is, in fact, anything else. Otherwise, okay. <clears throat> I think we might be done. Uh, Wrestling Bios did a great re- look back on the history of the King of the Ring 1993 tournament which documented uh, Bret Hart's win. Uh, they, uh, there's also a great video from uh, MMA on Point about why, quote-unquote, boring fights matter and why fans you know, of MMA should watch them. Uh, let's see. Uh, anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Real yeah. short week for you, huh? Like, well, I've been watching hmm. other things and working, so. All right. I mean, I've caught up on some like stream. I've caught up on like some streaming stuff, you know. Like I, um, like I told you, I watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but like I don't know, it, it was okay. But I'm like, I'm, I want to wait. I'm kind of treading the line of where that's gonna go. So I don't really, I'm not too sold on it just yet. Um, the one I'm actually most intrigued with is, um, is uh, the Rock's new series, Young Rock. Mm-hmm. I I find that this show it, it really does have something where it could go with it. It it's there's a lot of heartwarming moments in this. A lot of it feels very like a very like an actual very grounded thing. As silly as the concept of him being like president might be, you know. Mm-hmm. But it it actually goes through all of his actual history and doesn't like glorify him to a degree. It really sheds light on some real shit that happened to him, and I I appreciate that. Like the m- most recent one was when he was in Miami, and he um, said something about, I think the injury he had before he started the season was like his shoulder or something like that, and it, t- it took him out for the whole time, and his dad had this, like, very real conversation with him going, like, you know, because he was just giving up and sitting around the house, and he didn't feel motivated to do anything in class. He just wanted to give up. And his dad goes, look at me, man. I'm wrestling for, like, pennies on the dollar, and I – still as as confident in myself as i've ever been and he's like i don't give up why should you you know and i think that goes a long way for what the show's message it's trying to send and it's not always heavy on the nose either it's they try to lead you along and tell you like you know this is the real way things go down sometimes and you just you got to deal with it in your own way or else you're not going to make it you know and i really like it i like it for that i feel like the show has potential to to go somewhere you know Whereas the other one I watch, uh, uh, Keenan, these kind of air back to back. That one just feels like more like a traditional sitcom with uh, Keenan Thompson. Um, still funny stuff, but just yeah, um, way more, way different on that end. But I did play a lot. I've been told you lately. I've been playing a lot in the retro scene. A lot, a lot, a lot of retro games. Um, my biggest thing has been GameCube as of late. Um, uh, let's see. I, uh, though one of the worst one of the worst things though is that um I was trying to play my Dreamcast and there's a game I just could not get to work and I've taken it numerous places try to see if I could salvage it. it doesn't look like I can so I might have to get rid of it and I don't I want to I really I'm not a fan of like just trashing a game you know I don't know how you feel about that but I I like to preserve stuff if I can I don't want to see it go away, especially with retro stuff and disc-based games in general, because once that's gone, like, there's not many copies of that stuff. But um, it was called Trick Style, and I, um, I took it, yeah, I took it numerous places, and I found it was only, like, 10 bucks. So I'm like, what am I really losing? But I don't know. <sighs> still dis- still di- disappointing. But, yeah, other than that, man, not, not a whole lot other than that going on for me this week. So I'm pretty much set. 
All right. Well, then let's wrap it up. RealNerdCorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com. We're on Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. We are on Instagram at Real Nerd Corp. You can also find us on the YouTube at YouTube.com backslash. I think it's Real Nerd Corp. No, it's not. It's just search Nerd Corp. We don't have enough subscribers yet. <laughs> Uh, we're also on twitch.tv backslash Real Nerd Corp. We're also on twitch.tv backslash Wrestling Underground. For the other side of the, of the website, we're also on youtube.com backslash Wrestling Underground as well. Or The Wrestling Underground, I forget which one's which. So be sure to follow us there uh, and on Twitter at NERDCRP. Matt, where, where, you, where can people find you on Twitter? You, you can find me on Twitter at MNerdCorp. And you're also on uh, Instagram, uh, the Twitch too, right? I am, but I haven't posted on there a lot lately. You may, you can mainly find me on Twitter for the most part. You can find me on Twitter at Chad Nerdcorp, C H A D N E R D C O R P, and on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. With all that being said, we are done for the week. We will talk to you guys next week. Matt, take us home. Thanks everybody for listening, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>